Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for inviting me, and thank you for being here in the room. Um, technology um, and where it's going, uh, very difficult to predict. Um, we've, I guess, over the last 25 years, um, we've seen lots of changes with technology. Uh, we now have electronic systems, we have bus tracking, uh, we have passenger apps, um, but that's very largely providing a very broad base of information, stuff that you can get off Google. Um, but technology now allows us, particularly with the um, advent of, of the smartphone and the wide use of, of apps and things, to do some really quite exciting things um, that will lead the technology or the types of technology we're using in public transport to a completely different level. And I'm really going to talk about personalizing um, the way in which people can consume information and information can be delivered to them. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a, uh, an award-winning project that we undertook uh, in German, Germany. It was a uh, state-funded uh, project that involved academia and a broad selection of companies from industry. Um, working with and for travellers um, that have special needs and really focusing on what it was that they needed and the best way of engaging with them um, in the way that they chose to give them the information that they needed to consume um, so that they could use public transport. And obviously if we can do those things for people with very specific needs, um, then we can also do that for the general public and provide information in a way that individuals uh, want to consume it, um, uh, the information they want to consume uh, in the manner that they wish to consume it. So I will just tell a little story about who we are, um, what we do, um, and then get into um, how we develop this technology. Um, and I've got a couple of short videos that actually show the technology in use by the people who were part of the project, the disabled groups, um, and how they consumed it and their reaction uh, to it. It's, it's quite interesting because it's quite different. Okay, who are we? Um, in it are a uh, German technology company uh, based in Karlsruhe in Germany. Um, we've been doing business um, in public transport for the last 34 years, and we've expanded out from Germany, like all good small and medium German enterprises, and basically got offices all over the world now, and we employ people all over the world. So what do we do? Well, we do four main things, really. Um, we do planning and dispatching, you know, the timetables, the blocks, the, 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 the duties and everything else that people do. We do dispatching systems uh, that help you uh, marry up your, your, your buses or your trains um, and uh, the people who are operating them. Um, we do fleet management systems. These are the systems that we use to drive our city, cities. Um, I suppose a key differentiator of what we do is we do integrated systems. So we do multimodal, multi-client systems uh, that drive some of the big cities in the world. And I'll give you some examples in a moment. Um, in addition to that, um, we do um, ticketing systems. And we've done a bundle of ticketing systems over the last 28 years all over the world. And nowadays, we're doing things like account-based ticketing. Um, and, and that's quite important. Uh, if we're doing planning, uh, we're doing fleet management in real time, and we're doing ticketing, we've got some of the building blocks uh, around mobility as a service. And the things that we're, we're doing for um, individuals and individual groups is building towards that paradigm of mobility as a service that many people have talked about this week. Um, the other thing I suppose that we do, and increasingly um, is popular, is, is, is analyzing and optimizing. And this is, this is, this is doing driver behavior. This is, this is doing um, uh, vehicle health monitoring. Um, this is doing passenger counting. Um, so we're, we're adding to the richness of the data and the data sets that we've got, and it enables us to give a bigger and better picture of what we do. So where do we do those things? Well, you might not have heard of us. We're not a, maybe a household name. Um, but if you look at some of the cities where we've um, carried out and, and, and where we provide these services, uh, there'll be household names, places like Stockholm, uh, like Oslo, 
uh, like, like Montreal, like Portland, like New York. Um, these are all names that you'll have heard of and see, and we provide all of those types of systems to those cities. On a more local basis, um, we have systems in New Zealand and Australia. Um, we have ticketing systems, uh, we have planning systems, we have dispatching systems uh, that are used um, in, in this area as well, including here in Tasmania where they use an init ticketing system. Um, we, we've been talking about mobility as a service. Uh, mobility is made up of chains, and these are chains of data. Um, and, and to get mobility systems working efficiently and effectively, um, we, we have to build these mobility chains. We have to connect um, our planning to our dispatching. Uh, planning is a theoretical art. Uh, the moment planning's done, it's incorrect. Um, and we then have to do dispatching. We do things in our daily jobs, in our depots and, and, and uh, our stations that have an impact on the plan. Um, when we've done something that changes the plan, um, and maybe we've added a bit of ticketing in there, we need to communicate it to the people who are going to consume. If we don't communicate it and the chains are broken, uh, we're doing things in our network and we're not sharing the information with the people who are trying to consume what we're producing and there's confusion and dissatisfaction. And so it's really important that we connect these chains together in a dynamic way. Um, and that's why we use things like APIs, okay? Connecting people, connecting information, connecting communication all together in one system that drives the network. And when you do that, you can produce things like this. I'll just run a short video that has some examples of, of some of the things we do. We live in an intermodal society where bikes and cars are connected to buses and trains that interlink with ride services like Uber and Lyft. To connect all of these transport modes, public transit services must be reliable. The Intermodal Transport Control System from Enit delivers exceptional performance for fleet monitoring, schedule adherence, and incident management. That means when you have delays, the ITCS enables you to quickly coordinate ad hoc changes and communicate those changes in real time to your drivers and passengers. Our experience with both large and small fleets can help you. In Champaign-Urbana, MTD uses the connection protection feature in the ITCS to initiate immediate measures to guarantee passengers don't miss their connecting bus. In Denver, when RTD experiences disruptions in light rail service, dispatchers use the ITCS to implement bus bridges so riders can enjoy continuing service. The ITCS allows you to future-proof your operations by seamlessly adding new components when it's convenient for you. And its ITCS delivers the tools you need to put control back in your hands. In it, the future of mobility. So that just gives you a very quick uh, overview of our, our world of fleet management um, and, and real time. But what if you have different needs? Um, and, and what are those needs? Well, the, the world's going to be different um, if you can't consume uh, the product that we're selling uh, in an ordinary way and you have special needs. So the, the Aim For It research project looked at how, um, what the requirements are, um, how the people who have those requirements would like the information to be shared and delivered to them, um, and then uh, went on to build tools um, that would actually deliver those things to those people who needed them in a way that they wished to consume them. And so there was engagement with uh, disability groups uh, and associations uh, in Germany and Austria and Switzerland um, to ascertain what the needs were. And it, it was really quite fascinating for us as technology people um, as, as to the range of, of disabilities that people had that were trying to use public transport and the help that they said they, they needed. So it's generally reckoned that somewhere between 15 and 20% of all the people on, um, in the world have some form of disability that means that they need to consume what we're providing in a slightly different way. So the aim of the, uh, the, the project was to identify the requirements uh, both from the service and the user point of view. Um, what the people's needs were, the information and how it should be presented, um, to tailor information for, for specific 
uh, requirements. Um, and this had to be done in three different phases. Uh, 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 Pre-trip, so the planning, the, the consumption when people were in the trip, and then after the trip um, to, to really look at uh, what the effect was and whether we need to modify anything. The other thing that we, we were conscious of as technology people is using the existing standards and interfaces uh, that exist in the world um, so that this was, uh, uh, we were able to deliver this very quickly um, and it could be expanded very rapidly. Um, the pre-trip phase um, was the, about the use of the mobile phone um, and the, the, the trip planning apps. Um, but taking into uh, uh, consideration that people with disabilities cannot make transfers as quickly as able-bodied people and having to allow more time for different user groups. Um, looking at all the barriers that are in our systems that mean, uh, for example, if there's no elevator or wheelchair, uh, user needs different information to someone who can walk uh, um, but, it, but is hearing impaired. Um, and so people need to consume things differently. And based on this trip planning, we created uh, 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 methodologies for communicating with people. Um, during the trip, uh, it's recognized that it, it's fine someone plans something and then something goes wrong in the trip and the plan has to be altered. And when this happens, we have to give people a new plan uh, in a way that they can consume it, but taking care of the individual circumstances that they have and their requirements, uh, not offloading people um, at a station um, uh, if they're in a wheelchair where well, there's only stairs. So actually building the databases using the fleet management system and the databases uh, to provide a unique experience for the individual um, that needs to consume. Um, and then, again, there was an assumption that, that people were just happy to use the mobile phone and we all use the mobile phone the same. It's not true. Um, uh, people uh, with different uh, disabilities like to use their devices in different ways. So we had to make different solutions to allow people to consume in, in slightly different ways. Um, there was no point doing all of this unless we could measure the effectiveness of what, what was being provided and, and allow a feedback loop. And this was very interesting. So what did the technology involve? Okay, um, does this have a pointer on it? Nope. Okay, um, in blue, um, we, we've got the, the, the individual with the mobile phone, um, and the mobile phone's connected to the, uh, the internet and the World Wide Web, but also the mobile phone can connect at an intimate level with the vehicle. So this is the kind of first time this is happening. So people are getting information, but when the vehicle turns up, uh, the mobile phone is communicating with the vehicle and communicating with the driver. Um, and, and this has really never been done before. So when people are at the bus stop, bus approaches, uh, if they're blind, speaker on the outside of the, the bus recognizes them and announces that it's the number 33. Uh, because a bus has turned up and they know that, the app can tell them that, uh, but it, is it the right one? When they're inside the vehicle, there's other communication that goes on and the video will show that in a moment. The other thing that's happening in real time is that the vehicle is communicating with the fleet management system and the fleet management system is pumping out information to everybody in the network that, that wants to consume the information but in a form that they want to consume it in. So I run a video now, uh, it, it's made by uh, um, the, the people who did the trial. Um, it shows people using the system but it shows how individuals are treated very, very differently in the system in the way that the information is provided and shared with them. Many conventional systems focus on conveying information under normal circumstances and on regular connections with real-time display. New media facilitate an accelerated flow of information and location-specific access to information. The AIM for It research project aims to develop new information channels and to optimize the flow of information even in the event of service interruptions. Traffic control centers organize day-to-day -day operations, initiate corrective measures and find alternatives. An opportunity to test a new AIM4IT app presented itself during the holiday trade fair. 
Service interruptions will be simulated on the test road between Karlsplatz and the exhibition center. First, passengers define their user profile and select their output channel. Passengers in wheelchairs receive visual information on their mobile phones. Blind passengers and visually impaired passengers receive the information via the text-to-speech channel. For the first time ever, hearing impaired and deaf passengers have unfettered access to notifications regarding service interruptions in sign language, their native language. The routing system gives everyone the same recommendation. Take the U2 line to the Messe Prater station. Wolfgang is blind. Daniele is severely visually impaired. The app recommends that they take the elevator. The same recommendation is given to Roland, who is in a wheelchair. Christoph, an average passenger who is interested in the app, has used Wiener Linien's route planner for years. Patricia has been deaf since she was born. Her native language is sign language. Her friend Ingrid is also hearing impaired. All three of them take the shortest route to the YouTube platform via the escalator. Representatives of the AIM for it team are also testing the app and shadowing the testers. Everyone makes it to the next train on the U2 line and heads off to their destination, the exhibition center. Suddenly there is a service interruption on the U2 line. A power failure prevents the onward journey from the Paterstern station. Emergency vehicles are en route. The Metro Control Center organizes a replacement bus service. The testers are notified of the service interruption in the Schottenring station. Roland and Christoph receive a visual notification on their mobile phones. Wolfgang and Daniele via text to speech. And Patricia and Ingrid via text to Avatar. The recommendation, get off the train at the Praterstein station and take the 82A bus line to the exhibition center. Die U2 kann derzeit nur zwischen Karlsplatz und Praterstern fahren. Zwischen Praterstern und Seestadt ist ein Ersatzverkehr eingestellt. Everyone gets off at Praterstern. The visual guidance system shows them how to proceed. In contrast, Wolfgang figures out his route using the AIM for it app. Auf der Sicherheitslinie gegen die Fahrtrichtung bis zum Bahnsteigende. The testers take the elevator up to the ground level to get to the bus stop for the 82A. Various requests are taken into consideration upon arrival at the bus stop. The bus driver's display shows the following time delayed notifications. Pick up request from wheelchair user. Pick up request from blind passenger. Thus, the bus driver is informed before arriving at the bus stop. Then the testers get on the bus. The driver activates the ramp for Roland. to communicate with the onboard computer during the journey, Wolfgang consults the app to find out what the next stop is. Nächste Station. Roland notifies the driver that he would like to get off the bus. He needs to use the ramp. The bus driver's display shows stop requested by wheelchair user. The testers have now reached the destination and get off the bus. Now, nothing stands in the way of an enjoyable visit to the holiday trade fair. After visiting the holiday trade fair, testers head to the city hall for a culinary retreat and to discuss the test run. Service on the U2 has also been restored at this point. The routing system gives everyone the same recommendation. Take the U2 towards Karlsplatz and get off at the Rathaus station. While everything at first goes according to plan on the way to City Hall, the control center is then notified of a service interruption. The elevator in the Rathaus station is out of order. Corrective measures are initiated. 
Since this notification is only relevant to wheelchair users and those who have difficulty walking, the Aim For It app only sends a notification to Roland. The app recommends that you get off the train at the Schottentor station. The elevators are working in that station. The alternative route on ground level is only a little bit farther. While everyone else continues to the Rathaus station, Roland gets off the train and takes the first elevator to the passageway and then the second elevator to ground level. Ich finde die App sehr nützlich, weil auch Menschen mit CP-Einträchtigungen profitieren von Informationen über Störungen der Lifte. Für mich als Normalverbraucher ist das Rerouting sehr interessant. Ich glaube, das ist die richtige Richtung für die App. Die Verbesserung von Störungsmeldungen und Angabe von Alternativrouten ist für blinde Menschen sehr wichtig. Roland reaches his destination shortly after the others. Für mich ist es eine wunderbare Sache, weil diese App äh, hilft einem, egal mit welcher Behinderung, ob Sehbehinderung oder Rollstuhl, einfach den direktesten Weg zu finden, trotz einer Störung. Mir wäre es ohne diese Map nicht möglich gewesen, pünktlich hier zu sein. In the meantime, the test program has been completed in Vienna. Furthering testing will soon take place in Karlsruhe. What do you think? Would you also find the Aim for It app useful? And would you like to see this project continued? Okay, so it's really interesting. Uh, the testing has been finished. Uh, the trial is proven. Um, that if you know what people want to consume, you have the right data, you manage it and share it in the correct way, um, then you can do this sort of thing. Um, I think it's a very interesting illustration of what we'll be able to do in public transport with information and how that we can tailor the information that we share with our passengers uh, precisely uh, to their own needs. Thank you very much.